a little sleepy. All right, so we are in the book of Acts chapter two. We're gonna do a lot of reading today because I think it's important for us to, yes, we know that uh, what happened at Pentecost was a pretty major thing. It's something that is taught over and over and over again. And we heard it, we may have heard about it. We may have read about it. We may have even studied this before, but I believe that it's important for us to also see the context in which Peter was talking, the context in which they were gathered and, um, so we're going to be using our Bibles a little today, uh, uh, a little more than we usually do, because we always use our Bibles. Amen. <laughs> um, so we're going to we're going to read um, Acts chapter two uh, from verses one to thirty eight. And then we're going to um, unpack it. And so if there's some people, someone online who doesn't mind, maybe. There's like there's 38 verses, somebody, maybe three people, four people, maybe 10 verses each or something like that. We can break it up. Okay. Ava's got a question. Somebody else want to take on the when Ava finishes, take over, and then the next person. That would be great. And then we will pray. Mm -hmm. And again, we are in Acts chapter two. We're going to be reading verses one through 38. We need to turn on the fan. Okay. Thank you. You might have to bring it out maybe. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ava, whenever you're ready, we're ready. <laughs> Thank you. The Holy Spirit comes back to us, actually. When the day of the came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be the tongue of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a cloud came together in the winter because each one of them heard speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are these not are not all these men who are speaking Galatians? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Corinthians, Medes, Medes, uh, El Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, uh, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the part of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, uh, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Um, Christians, Arabs were here. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. All right. All right. No, you're good. No, you're good. Anybody want to pick up on verse 12? We're reading to verse 38. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying to one another, What means this? Others mocking and said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunk, as ye suppose. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it came to pass. In the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. 
the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and noble day of the Lord come. Okay. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, bear these words of Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourself also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, hmm. whom God have raised up, having loosed the pain of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding, holding of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, and I should not be moved. Therefore did my therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else to finish up 29 to 38, even online? Acts 2. Oh, go ahead, Tracy. Thank you. 29? Yes, 29 to 38, please. Lord and brethren, let me speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, be not confident and knowing that God has sworn it and oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up that to sit on his throne. He seeing this before, take of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in him, neither of his flesh did he corrupt him. If Jesus has God raised up, therefore we are all within him. Therefore, by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth his faith, which ye know he has shared. For David is not ascended, is not ascended into the heaven, but he, he said to himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assured that God has made that same Jesus whom we have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard it, they were pricked in their hearts, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Oh. Thank you. Amen. Whew. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. Lord, I pray that our hearts are made glad and are rejoicing in it. Because, Lord, Lord, you are good, you are faithful, you are kind and compassionate. God, you are merciful, you are wonderful and excellent and marvelous. God, you are all-knowing, all-wise. God, you are a healer and a provider and a protector. God, you are not only um, father to us, Lord God, but you call us your friend. God, you are the lover of our souls. God, you, you knit us, Lord God, and you hold us in the palm of your hand. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this day. God, we thank you for your word that took on flesh, but, be, and, and, but also is alive. And we thank you, Father, that your word is active even now, Lord God. Father, I pray that we would lay every care and concern at your feet that we will topple that you God we give you we surrender and give you full reign to topple any idol that we came in here with Lord any ideas any philosophies any things that are against your word Lord God like things that we probably don't even know that we have held on to Lord God God you take full ownership and will and and 
sovereignty on the thrones of our hearts now, Lord. God, we ask that you would forgive us of our sins. Lord, we thank you so much for using us in the way that you have because you didn't have to do it, God. We thank you, Father, for being Lord of our lives. We thank you for being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, we thank you for this time. Lord, we ask that you would um, fill us afresh with your spirit, that you would give us the wisdom to not only understand your word, but to hear it and to walk it out. And Lord, to share with someone else. We love you, Father. God, I ask that you would hide me behind your cross today, Lord God, that you would give me, that you would fill me afresh, God, that you would anoint me, Lord, that your voice is louder than my voice. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. So here are um, a few significant things I think we should know before we unpack these, these verses that are before us in Acts chapter 2. And just following up from the first chapter that we read, they were united. They were on one accord. There was a large gathering of Jews from other nations who had gathered for the Feast of Weeks after having waited 50 days after the seventh Sabbath. God commanded them in the book of Leviticus chapter 23 and in Deuteronomy 16 to count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. He says, then you shall keep the Feast of Weeks. Pentecost is also the Feast of Weeks. And during this Feast of Weeks is where they presented a grain offering, which happens to be the only offering where leaven or yeast was used. Mm -hmm. We know that we think about the Old Testament when they talked about how they had off grain offerings or bread. They never put yeast in it. But this was one of the one times where yeast was put in there because Jesus was the only one who could take away the sin. And remember, that's what the yeast stood for. The third thing that we should... Uh, a, a significant point of reference of, in reference to this is the Feast of Weeks followed the first festivals of first fruits, which was and is celebrated at the time of the Passover. Miss <laughs> Hester, do you need something, ma'am? She's okay. You okay? Um, as you may recall, we've discussed how the festivals foreshadow Christ, Passover, foreshadow Christ, the festival of unleavened bread, the feast of booths or the feast of tabernacle. Um, all of those foreshadow Christ. Um, Jesus was crucified as the Passover lamb and rose from the grave at the, the feast of first fruit. I want you to listen to this. This is, so, this is one of those significant things. Like, these festivals, these feasts were instituted thousands of years before. We read about them in, like I said, Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Um, and God specifically had particular times and dates in mind. And so Jesus was crucified as the Passover lamb and rose from the grave at the feast of first fruits. Following his resurrection, Jesus spent the next 40 days teaching his disciples before ascending to heaven. 50 days after his resurrection and after ascending to heaven to sit at the right hand of God, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit as promised to indwell the disciples and empower them for ministry. The promised Holy Spirit arrived on the day of Pentecost, which is another name for the Feast of Weeks. Again, the Feast of Weeks happened 50 days after the Feast of the First Fruits. That was thousands of years before and just so happened, we're not gonna say that, but we know that God who is holy and intentional and sovereign and gracious did this then and continues to do that in our lives now. There are so many, yet this past weekend, we were just talking, I was talking, to, I had um, coffee with one of the ladies in the class, Phyllis and I, and we were just talking about how Something that happened last year, we saw a, sort of a manifestation of it this week. And it's like, we didn't even know the two even connected. You just don't, you never know how God is going to do things. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when um, Leslie does the feast 
she talks about how those seeds coincided with what you said when Jesus died and being the lamb and all of that. Exactly, exactly. It's all connected. And God, um, if we could, if, if we could, that's why I think it's so important for us um, to think about the history, to read those those Old Testament um you know, Leviticus may be like, oh, it's a bunch of rules and laws and all of that, but it all connects to Christ. It all connects to Christ. God was intentional about asking them to do these things because he wanted them to see an example. This is what I'm coming after. This I've always had a plan of redemption. I've always had a plan to save you. I've always had a plan to give you a, a way of deliverance. And this is how it's going to happen. And so they have an example. So we're, we, again, they are gathered here from Jews from all over, from many different places. Um, this how happened that they, this was a large gathering because they were there for the Feast of Weeks. And um, so everyone knew why they were there. They knew the 50 days had passed. All of, you know, some of them were witnesses. So they knew what was kind of going on. And they're probably like, oh, this is the same amount of time as the Feast of Weeks that we've always done. But there were others who were there who were there for a totally different thing. They were just there for the festival. They were just there for what was going on, but they were all gathered. They were all gathered. They were there praying. They obeyed uh, the, the, the ones, the witnesses who had seen Christ were doing what he told them to do, uh, obeying. They were trusting the plan of God and they waited and they prayed. And again, they were united. They were all on one accord, amen. So let's look at this. Acts chapter two, we're going to start in verse five because we, we've already kind of gone through the, the entire chapter there. Um, they've already, they're in, they're in, to, in this place together. Um, they've already, in verse five, what had already happened was, uh, again, they were on a one accord. The sound came from heaven, this rushing mighty wind. Again, uh, pointing back to things that happened in the Old Testament, how God showed himself with the wind and fire, um, then appeared to them divided tongues as fire and one sat on each of them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak with other tongues and the, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse five, our lessons, or we pick up in verse five. It says, okay, I'm going too far. Go back up, Letitia. Verse five, and they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, look, are not all these who speak Galeans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Alamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Paphlia, Egypt and all the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we can hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God, the miracle, the sign, the wonder of this moment is that the Holy Spirit did not only give them the ability to hear in other language, but they were also speaking in other tongues by the power of the spirit. And what does verse 11 say they were saying? What did they say? They were declaring the works of God. They were declaring the works of God. They weren't just, babbling they were speaking in other languages declaring the works of God some Bible say the wonderful works of God the wonderful things God has done the deed the great deeds got of God's power imagine that it just gives me chills just thinking about it you know um watching like uh international uh like uh camp meetings or, or revivals and seeing other people sing in other languages. I don't have to know what they're singing. I, it just, the, the power, the, the power can be experienced and felt just in the, you know that they are singing to the Lord. 
um, whether they're speaking in French or they're speaking in Mandarin or they're speaking in Russian or whatever it is. And so imagine just hearing all of these different languages, declaring the works of God, talking about how wonderful and mighty God's power is, and just looking at each other and just amazed that they can hear it in that other language. So that um, they were amazed, like we're, you know, we're, we're looking at it, you know, from 20, from this view, looking back on it, just like we're amazed, they were all amazed and perplexed, verse 12 says, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mock, saying they were, are full of wine, of new wine, but Peter, here we go, Peter, <laughs> gotta love Peter. You know, you need a, everybody needs a Peter, to be honest. I really, you know, you got to have a person who's going to stand up and, and tell the truth. But Peter, standing up with the 11, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. The third hour of the day meant 9 a.m. They started counting at 6 a.m. The third hour of the day, Peter mentions this because Jews customarily did not eat that early in the morning. He was like, we haven't even eaten yet. Certainly we're not drinking. You know, it is not even the third hour of the day. We, we haven't even had our first meal. So we're definitely not drinking. Um, but he says, but this is what the prophet, this was spoken by the prophet Joel. Hmm. And I'm going to read it. I know it's not on our list, but I'm going to read it because I think it's important. This is what the prophet said. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. How much? <laughs> Who? All flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And my men servants the words you all and my maid servants i will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy and i will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke verse 20 the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood but before the coming of the great and awesome uh, day of the lord and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved Peter pointed out the prophecy from Joel, God will pour out his spirit on some, a few, <laughs> all, he said all flesh, and not just your sons, but your daughters, and not just the young, but the old, and not just the poor and the slave, but he said, everyone, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, because God's spirit rested they knew god's spirit rested on kings on priests on prophets but now he is pouring out his spirit on whoever calls on the name of the lord you know the they thought that they were a selected few you know they were so high and mighty with their garments on and all their regalia and all of that but god said mm -mm. whoever calls on my name sons and daughters <laughs> young and old because even though they were supposed to respect the old they did not mm -hmm. treat they did not take care of that's why jesus told them take care of the widow you know watch out for the. that's why jesus had to tell them because they weren't doing it mm -hmm. they they kind of just left them off to the side and so he said yeah young and old men servants and maid servants <laughs> whoever calls on the name of the lord will be saved and so uh, Peter continues to preach and talk about Jesus, drawing their attention to the Messiah. What was prophesied has been fulfilled in Jesus, he's telling us. So verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and and Christ. Therefore, let's break it down what Peter said. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested uh, by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs that you know about, the one who was falsely accused and crucified and put to death, the one who was raised to life because death could not hold him, 
the one David prophesied that God would raise up and sit on the throne at his right hand. The one we witnessed, the one who is seated at the right hand till his enemies are his footstool, even they crucified Jesus. This person, even though they crucified Jesus, they made this Jesus whom you crucified, Lord in Christ. Even though you crucified him, God made him, this Jesus, Lord and Christ. Mm -hmm. Peter mm -hmm. preached. <laughs> he said, now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Peter called on them to turn from their sin and repent. But the first thing he did was gave them the gospel. The first thing he did was gave them the gospel. And it just always is... Um, you know, we've talked about this a lot in this class about how the word, it really is enough. Mm -hmm. The word really is enough. Um, I, I will admit, uh, when I was younger, I thought, well, you have to give it to, a, you know, you have to throw in these extra things so that it could be palatable. The word really is enough. <laughs> I am guilty of saying that. I'm guilty of, of even sharing it in that way um, so that it may sound like it was relatable to the hearer. But as I got older and as I started to walk with the Lord the more, like, no, I don't need to dumb down God's word. I don't, I don't need to, to jump through hoops. And I just need to be honest about how, I'm, how much I need it, how much I need him. And then point them to, to the one who saved me and who's still doing a work in and through my life. Uh, so Peter gave them the gospel. And just giving them the gospel cut them at the heart. And I find myself and it was yesterday, and some of you said that yesterday, my um daughter called and she was asking me about. It was a parent issue with her son and his dad and everything. And I found myself going to the sister telling her how to like, how to solve that problem. And it was like, you know, honor thy father and mother, and make the dollars of what that parent does to feel honor that father and mother. And then they were having a conflict. I said, well, then the sister also tells me to go with him and them alone. And if it doesn't work, take somebody with you. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I know we have a couple of teachers in the room, but this whole idea of the word uh, being enough, I also, it, it pricks my heart to see some of the children's story Bible books, um, because some of the stories just like, why can't you just say this is what happened? And I understand the children have a, a they have to come to a, a fuller understanding of really what's going on. But I think we could do a little better with some of our children Bibles too, because um, the way that some of the stories are kind of washed, it it just it, it I think it 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 does it just justice. But then it, it kind of almost makes them have to pick up or um, make up for what they learned from when they were younger. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, to fill in the gaps, exactly. Going back to what you said earlier about sharing the gospel and wanting to make it uh, palatable to others, I think there is um, that ex experience right there, right? Um, where you want to make the love of Christ acceptable to others, like, okay, uh, how can I witness to this person? And then it becomes a self-conscious thing of, mm -hmm. oh, okay, am I doing the thing? But to remember, only the Holy Spirit, Spirit. can save. Mm -hmm. And any goodness 
um, coming into the view, whether it's a witness to somebody or something that you do, is only by the power Amen. of God. Amen. So it shifts, with what you were saying, it shifts the accountability or um, the responsibility from your shoulders to like, Lord, I want to be able to witness. I want to be able to be relatable by helping me to do this thing. I'll show me the way because ultimately Jesus Christ uh, and by the Holy Spirit is the only way that we can be an example for others. Mm -hmm. So rely on that. It's exactly. Important. Amen. Amen. Yes, I and I thought, and I think you probably know the story about um, Becky Hill Perry. She was recorded in the Old Testament. Yes. I don't know if you want to share. No, go go ahead. Go ahead. But basically, she was doing an audio Bible. She was recording the Old Testament, and the sound engineer in the studio who was recording her. Long story short, he got saved um, mm -hmm. hearing her just read. Just, just reading the, the Old Bible. Testament. She didn't witness to him. She didn't break it down. Just straight reading of scripture. And yeah. All the pattern of rebellion and. Just how they were just ignoring God and just the word, like you said, God by Himself by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. No man came to know Jesus. He, but it he, wasn't her. It wasn't, it wasn't her. her. Yeah. I don't know if you heard Sonya online, but yeah, um, uh, Jackie Hill Perry. She uh, she did the she recorded. She was recording the Old Testament. Um, was she, I think she, did she was doing the whole Bible, but anyway, she was doing the Old Testament and the sound engineer that was there was not saved but he got saved just by hearing the recording because he asked her why do they keep doing the same thing over and over again <laughs> and just by that just hearing the word old testament he got saved also repentance still preach jesus and believe and, and like you already saying we can't say anything mm -mm. but god gives us the words and spirit and can Jesus told his disciples, he said, when you go and you, you preach, but if they don't listen, you take the drugs off your feet. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is go preach Jesus. You don't have to look pretty. You don't have to uh, say, oh, I got an issue. I, I hope this person to do this way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we try to do everything we can to reach out to others, we actually get out of what God wanted us wants you to do. Mm -hmm. He said, just preach Jesus. If not for one person get that, then that one person can go out and get it. Amen. Amen. You may not be the laborer that God has called to reach a certain group of people. Mm -hmm. But he has laborers out there Amen. and able to do it. So you just do what it is that God wants for me to do. We can't please everyone. No. The yes, we exactly, and we need to be content. Amen. And I think by verse 21, which is not really part of the lesson, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's it. I have a dad in sight of my last father on Thursday. Man, he wanted to argue with me about mm -hmm. my work and oh, how I work through all of this kind of stuff. Because I was explaining to him about what he's doing for his son. And he said, well, no, 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 no. I, I'm a biblical scholar. So that kind of crazy Lord, that takes another day. <laughs> that conversation lasted a long time before I even got to the base. Uh, but it lasted a long time, and so what I learned from that is just okay, I'm not gonna argue with this mm -hmm. man about my work, I'm just gonna preach Jesus. That's right, and if uh, it was not he accepts it, that's not on me. Amen. Mm -hmm. If he thinks he has to do the work, I say, You, you gotta do those six times, you can do all of the six times, right. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if you transgress one of them, you transgress the whole thing. Oh, yeah. So we can't do that. That's why he came. Right. Well, my work, I, I, I have you done all of those things? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't do any of those things. I try my best to be good. I say, well, thank God for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and I want him to keep all of I know. And he saves them. That verse. Anyone who calls on the name of the 316, that's all. Amen. Amen. And all of those stuff supports that verse. Yeah. Yeah. 
It does. Just pre Jesus. That's right. That's it. And we have to be content with being seed planters. We really do have to be content with just planting the seed. I know that we want to see the turnaround. We want to see how it impacted their lives, but we have to be content, which is maybe you're just supposed to plant a seed. Maybe you're just supposed to tell them that Jesus saves. Maybe you're just supposed to tell them that God loves them. Maybe you're just supposed to tell them that you know Jesus died for your sins. Maybe you need to tell them that your works are not enough. That you really aren't good. There's only one that's good. <laughs> There's only one that's good. And his name is Jesus, not Bob. You know, um, <laughs> or not Helena, not Leticia, not, uh, yeah, exactly, all of that. Um, yeah, we have to be consent with being seed planters because it is the Holy Spirit that does the work. There's, they were cut at the heart. That wasn't something that they did. They didn't cut their own heart. They were moved by the spirit because they heard something that gave, gave them the conviction. Peter called on them to turn from their sin, to repent, not to rationalize their behavior. Like, you know, I, we probably all have done before we came to Christ. <laughs> it, but it's a mercy of God that moved, that gave them a, a contrite heart, that contrition, that sorrow, that grief for their sin. That was God that did that. And that is God who does it when we plant the seed. Or maybe somebody else has to come around and water it and then they continue to have that. But with that repentance, it's a it's a it, it's a a Holy Spirit thing that that changes the heart, it changes our attitude, but it's also our faith to actually do the turning. Like we hear there's a there's a heart wrenching that goes on. But the heart wrenching is so uncomfortable. We are like for like I'm not going that way anymore. Mm -hmm. I see something greater. I, I feel like there's something better. I, I don't have to stay. I I, I can't stay. And not like I don't have to. I can't stay this way anymore. And I, re, I I think about different testimonies that I've heard in our class. I think about your testimonies that you've shared and how you just you didn't have the desire anymore. You didn't have the taste anymore. You just had to turn. You know what I mean? And just different things that I've heard from from the ladies in our class and. That is repentance. Um, he caused them to be baptized. Repent. They heard the gospel. They repented. And then they got baptized. Um, it's more than forgiveness. It's more than just asking for forgiveness. I think sometimes we hear messages and just ask God to forgive you. <laughs> And then it's okay, but there, you there is a turning that has that should take place also. Um, but he calls them to be baptized as an outward sign of their belief, just like the outpouring of the tongues. Amen. Um, this gathering of people from all over was intentional. Uh, again, they were there for the uh, feast of weeks but again god does all things well he does all things together and perfect and well there there's there's no accident that all of these different jews from all of these different places heard the gospel because guess where they went when it was over back to where they came from from all those different nations yes ma'am mm -hmm. um are these two lines were him who says once to every man and nation comes the moment to the time. And we all talk about what one song we hear Latin says is come Holy Spirit fill this place. Mm -hmm. And then breathe on the breath of God, fill me his life of me. Amen. Amen. Um yeah, all these places, Phrygia, Egypt, Crete, Asia. Um, kind of go back to all the places that they came from. Um, Croatia, I said Croatia, I don't think Croatia was on a creek. Um, Libya, Cyrene, uh, Pontus, Cappadocia, Judea, Mesopotamia, all these different places. So if someone asks you, well, how did the gospel 
get shared. Yes, the apostles and the disciples, they went out and they they went and they shared the gospel. But guess what? They did too. The ones who were there, who heard Peter preach and went out to all these different places. And then we wonder how the Ethiopian heard the gospel because somebody maybe left Egypt and went down there and they told them about it too. And then they heard it. And so just like we talked about last week, how it starts in your home. You, 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 you teach the gospel, you, you show the way you, you are a light to your children, your family, your, your coworkers or whatever, your, your inner circle. And then they hear it and they go out and tell other people. It's always been that way. It's always been about, I, you know, I, I tried to say it as intelligently as possible over and over throughout the years that I've had the opportunity to stand before you. But I am so sure that there is not when God blesses, when God does anything, it is not a singular purpose. It is never a singular purpose. He may have healed your arm. He may have healed your foot. He may have given you the resources to pay your mortgage, but it was not just for that one thing. I'm telling you it was not just because everything God does has a ripple effect. There's a multiplication thing behind it. Somebody was watching. They saw you get healed. Somebody saw you cry and weep while you mourned the loss of somebody, but also had energy, um, had not energy, but joy somehow. Somebody watched how you did not have the money to go to school, but somehow you graduated with a degree. There is not just, God does not do something singular. And so even in our, even how we say uh, when you sin, it's not a, a single occupation thing like your sin is affecting everybody just like god's blessing in your life is affecting everybody around you and as bishop mm -hmm. says in, in 41 he says those who accepted his message were baptized and about three thousand were added mm -hmm. to their number that day yeah. that and day. then it down on uh down at 47 it says praising god and enjoying the faith of all the people and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amen. He did. <laughs> he did. He did. And <clears throat> as Bible tradition does, they didn't count the women. There were women there. <laughs> there were women there. So it was probably more than 3,000. More than 3,000. And guess what? They probably was like, girl, let me tell you what I heard. And they probably said more than the other. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah if nothing else we I, there's so many things again that we could take away from this number one god's timing you know it's important that we remember to wait um just like the the whole how he told them in deuteronomy 16 and in leviticus 23 to wait those 50 days before the feast, the festival of, of the Feast of Weeks. And just how they had to, when Jesus, they didn't know that they were going to be waiting from Jesus, his crucifixion and his resurrection and the time that he was with them. And then the Holy Spirit came. It just so happened to be the same amount of days, 50 days. Um, God is intentional. There, there, there's a reason God does what he does and says what he says. And all we need to do is obey and be where he tells us to be and go where he tells us to go. Um, so, but the other big thing about this was they were united. They were on one accord, all of these different people. Um, this 120 in the beginning were on one accord. Now we're all in here. We love one another by the grace of God and the mercy of God, but we all have different personalities. And I can't imagine what it would be like if we were all stuck in this room, couldn't get out the room for days, how that would look. <laughs> you know, how we would lean on each other or get on each other's nerves. Who would be decided they was gonna go over there and just sit in that corner by themselves? You know, um, <laughs> who would, you know, just go into a table, who would just find themselves just reading their book and not trying to talk, or who would just be the one to try to boss everybody around? I don't know how that would look. 
but they were on one accord and God used their unity, the fact their obedience and the fact that they were praying to move and pour out his spirit. We're not all called to do the same thing. Every church is not all called to do the same thing, but the one thing that we're all called to do is preach the gospel. Amen. And if we could unify on that one thing, who knows what God could do, especially in the American church. <sighs> Lord have mercy, <laughs> especially in our churches. But um, they were on one accord. They were united. God moved. And the last thing I would just say is that Pe Peter preached the gospel. He told them they need to repent and that they should be baptized. And that's 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 the word. Amen. Anybody else got anything they want to add or take away from today? Well, praise God. Amen. Um, Phyllis, do you mind praying? Can you hear? I don't know if you're able to. Good morning, uh, Letitia. Of course. Thank you. Oh, Lord, what a time, what a time, what a time we have had. Um, breaking bread, Lord. Um, thank you for touching our hearts and thank you for um, your word. As Letitia said, the preach the word. The word doesn't need anything added to it, Lord. Um, your word goes down deep and it's powerful and it's active. So, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his power. We thank you for his authority, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that teaches us, um, that arrests us, Lord, that loves us um, and that causes us to be committed and obedient to you. We thank you so much, Jesus, for your your, your grace and your mercy for, for without it, Lord, we would not know what to do. We would not know what to do. So we thank you, Jesus, so much for giving us um, this lasting legacy and how it impacts us and how it impacts others as we go forth and spread your word. We thank you so much for this day and the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you have not filled out the sheet, um, sign in. the sign-in sheet, please uh, make sure you let Wilhelmina know so that we can get our